Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a blessed and beautiful day today. So I have an article that I want to read for you that I got off of. It used to be Breaking Israel News and they've changed their name to Israel 365 News. Um, There's a video that I'm going to play for you and um, I want to kind of give like a a warning that uh, because of the article and because of the video, I just want you guys to see the world that we're living in and the extreme, and I'm, by that I mean the far extreme demonic um, things that are going on and that we can pretty much hear the door opening and, you know, getting ready to see Jesus coming through the clouds. So I want to play this video for you. I'm just going to show you through a video. So, you know, I'm sorry if there's uh, reflections and stuff. It's just on my iPad. Um, but then I'll come back and then we'll read the, the uh, article together and I can show you, you know, and read for you guys what is happening. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play that video for you. It's just really quick. It's a minute long and then we'll go ahead and then we'll read the article. Okay, so I ended it before. It's a a minute and 17, a minute long and 17 seconds, but I ended it um, before they continued because they were using expletives and saying F Trump and all of that stuff. So I ended it um, before. But as you can see in the video, um, not normal, completely demonic possession. Um, Can you hear the door opening and waiting for Jesus to return? Because I know I can. (laughs) I mean, pretty much so, right? Um, So the article says, Boston anti-Trump protesters hold pagan ritual, eat, quote unquote, president's heart. Um, An Antifa protest in Boston on Sunday took a disturbingly bizarre twist as protester burned the U.S. flag while others called out the name of a pagan Hindu god acting out in a pagan ritual and human sacrifice, culminating in one protester covering himself in blood and eating a heart. On Sunday, Boston was full full of at least a 1,000 protesters uh, pitting pro-Trump protesters against anti-Trump protesters. The pro-Trump protesters was organized by a super happy fun America, a self-described white uh, right of center civil rights organization focusing on defending the american constitution uh let's see the stated purpose of the protest was to decry demonic (laughs) democratic violence we will peacefully demonstrate with speeches that uh let's see here we will peacefully demonstrate with speeches and patriotic banners in order to send a message that our group will not be intimidated at least three counter-protesters were scheduled in response. We must not allow racists to come into our city to spew negativity and hatred, but yet they're the ones that are saying F Trump, right? Another group called for a protest to counter the fascists. Uh, at the end of the SHFA protest, the police escorted them away while at least two anti-Trump protesters were arrested after clashing with police. Uh, okay, uh, one of the, let's see, oh dear. Uh, the anti-Trump political protest was transformed into a pagan ritual as one participant announced that they will perform a ritual to purge the United States. I was, excuse me, I was raped by Donald Trump, the female protester said, into a megaphone on behalf of all the women who's, and then it says garbled, meaning you couldn't understand it. I am here to do a ritual to make sure this filthy paws don't touch our beautiful country anymore. They're just mad because he's trying to prevent them from having an abortion. Um, 
they don't agree that anybody should prevent them from murdering their babies. So that's why they're demons and the Satan is acting out even more than before. Another participant dressed up in a parody of the president with a red mega hat and a yellow wig saying, I am Donald J. Trump, and while I am evil, I am no more evil than these boot-licking politicians out here today. All of these bleeps out here today worship me like a god. So I stand here as a sacrifice for what is right. The first participant then pulled a bloody heart from the front of a faux Trump shirt, raised it into the air, and proclaimed Kali Ma. Kali is a female god in the Hindu pantheon worshipped throughout India and Nepal. Though seen as the divine protector and the one who bestows moksha or uh, liberation, she is like many of the main Hindu deities associated with blood and death. Kali is seen as the bloodthirsty embodiment of destruction and the ultimate protector against evil. The Trump impersonator fell to the ground after which protesters of the president were posters, I'm sorry, excuse me, of the president were burned. Another protester picked up the discarded heart, holding it over his face and squeezing out blood all over his face. He then took bites out of the raw heart, screaming, I am on fire, Kali Ma. A bystander exclaimed, he he really is on fire, but the leader responded, it's okay, we do this all the time. The original participant then recited, may the chaos gods hear our cries. The group then chanted, praise to the chaos gods. Kali Ma, Kali Ma. Whew, this is crazy. Um, it, it is not a coincidence that they are calling out to a Kali Ma, Rabbi Greenbaum said. In Hebrew, the letters, I can't pronounce it, they are can be rearranged to spell Amalek, the perennial em enemy of Israel. The letters can also be arranged to spell Kamala, the vice president candidate for Democracy Party, Demo uh, Democratic Party. Amalek's entire being was focused on erasing any knowledge of Hashem, God, literally the name. Rabbi Greenbaum said, this was accomplished in any manner possible, whether it was witchcraft, idolatry, or depravity. In Kabbalistic Kabbal Kabbal <laughs> terms, the left is associated with a contradiction, which is judgment. Kabbalah speaks about a fake kindness of the evil inclination that comes from the left side. This was personified by Korach, who tried to make the extreme left mainstream, which is what is happening today. Rabbi Greenbaum emphasized that it is best not to speak the names of pagan gods too frequently as it gives strength to the side of impurity. Idolatry and paganism have always been a part of the culture of the secular elite from ancient times until now, Rabbi Greenbaum said. What we are seeing is idolatry trickling down to the populace. Rabbi Greenbaum noted that ab um, abortion is as part of the Democratic Party platform, was a modern manifestation of child sacrifice and not far removed from its pagan roots. Idolatrous practices include want wanton sexuality that inevitably resulted in unwanted pregnancies, and the solution was to offer the resulting babies up to the pagan gods. The rabbi also noted the resurgence in the sexualization of children, another pagan practice that is being revealed as part of the culture of the secular elite connected to Jeffrey Epstein. The left wing is not um, idolatry like we see it in the Bible, Rabbi Greenbaum said. In the name of plural, pl plurality, they bring together a conglomeration of the false beliefs, Wicca, Satanism, and whatever is popular. Rabbi Greenbaum noted that the Satanic Temple, which claims to be the um, non-theistic group, is growing in popularity because it presents itself as an advocate for secular causes, most notably abortion. Left-wing racism not only was the event bizarre, but the Hindu community perceived it as an as a cultural appropriation and racist. Of course they did, right? The whole incident appears to be a remarkable demonstration of Hindu phobia, and the individuals here do not come across as people with control of their mental 
uh, faculties. Um, oops. So again, they're trying to shove it off and kind of excuse it away that they're just trying to, you know, be racist to a particular religion when in fact it's demon possession and nobody wants to say that. Nobody wants to say, hey, look at this. This is not normal. This behavior is not normal. Um, you know, and may I suggest with political, um, you know, I try to stay out of politics on here, but, you know, having so much hatred towards one human being, why do they have so much hatred towards a man? Why do they have so much hatred towards President Trump? And it's because God put him in position. And Satan knows that his time is short. And God raises kings and he also takes down kings and his time may be up. Um, and Satan knows that if, if Donald Trump's time is up, that means his time is up. And so we can see the rise of demons you know, this is an invisible enemy that we are fighting. And the Christians who are watching for Jesus's return and who actually care that about the world and about what's going on and about the souls and the lost and about Jesus's return, those of us who are watching can see clearly what is happening. We can see the demons um, manifesting. And just like this video, we can see clearly that this is not even just the end times. We are we've been in the end times since Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. We've been in the end times. Um these are the final seconds and you know the t- stuff like this where it's caught on camera um and the screaming and you know the behavior like that it just I don't want to say it grosses me out, but it just fires me up because I know that that person is a lost soul. And I know that that person is going to stand before a holy God and they're going to have to answer for why they chose to reject the name of Jesus Christ. And they are following Satan and his word and instead of the true living word of God. And so I see that. But then at the same time, I I shake my head because there's so many people that are rapture deniers and you know, end times deniers that they don't see clearly the things that are happening and put two and two together that time is at hand. And like I said at the beginning, I can almost hear the door opening. That's how close we are to the rapture. And anybody who is a rapture denier, you know, of course, it's not going to send you to hell because you're denying the rapture. You're just fulfilling prophecy. And if you're um, a believer, you'll just be it'll be a surprise party for you because you're going to end up in heaven and it's going to be before the tribulation. Um, so I wanted to leave that with you. I saw that um, today and I had to get that out. It is so I just encourage you guys to pray, um, you know, take a day, take a moment as, as long as you possibly can. And I pray that, um, you know, pray for the last bit of lost souls that we can and bring as many, you know, pray for as many lost that we can so that they can get saved as fast as they can, because literally time is up and, you know, there's going to be, unfortunately, there are going to be many that are left behind. Um, But I just encourage you to pray for anybody that you know, pray for those that you don't know, um, because God's word is alive and, you know, he, God is not in a box. And just because you pray for somebody that you don't know does not mean that God cannot reach them and that God cannot touch them. So God is a movable God and he will, you know, pour out his spirit where he, where he sees fit. So I just encourage you to do that. And, um, you know, if you know anybody that isn't saved, you know, don't give up hope. Don't give up talking to them about the gospel. Don't give up sharing the truth because if they choose not to accept it now, being that they heard it so much and they they saw you live it through and they saw it in your life and active, it may possibly because of our actions and because we lived out our Christian life the way that Christ has asked us to, they are going to see us and remember 
us. And there, and then, you know, hopefully they will change, you know, after the rapture. Sadly, that's going to be a lot of the cases where, you know, we can pray and pray and pray for this person and they're going to end up being in the, you know, left behind. And they're just going to have to, you know, remember everything that was spoken over them and to them. And then they will have to make the ultimate, ultimate decision at that point. But, you know, all we can do is we can pray because we ourselves cannot do anything outside of the will of God. Um, you know, when he says move, we move. But, you know, the one thing that we can do is have a conversation with the Lord because he enjoys that and he enjoys that private time with us and he enjoys um, the love for the lost on our hearts. And I and I think that it shows true um if you want to even say it this way, it shows true evidence to of somebody's salvation when they they grieve the lost and they pray for the lost and they pray for the souls that are, you know, like this guy here. I mean, this is so sad. And on one end on your flesh, you just want to say, oh my gosh, you know, what a looney tune. But then on the other hand, you see it and you think this man is, he needs Jesus. You know, he needs Jesus just as much as anybody else does. So anyways, I wanted to share that with you and, um, yeah, so things are getting crazy guys. And if I find anything else, which I'm sure I will, I will come on and let you know. And, uh, yeah, we'll just keep watching for Jesus day by day. So anyways, guys, I love you. And until next time, may you be richly blessed.